coming down. If we had one more behind you, it would block out that back light. So if it were, and that didn't take long to set up. So we are live. This is Bill Conrad and Jonathan Denwood with WP Tonic. And we have a light kit in today. That's what we've added. We should probably put the other one up. But it does look better. And we're using the new 930 mic. We're running everything through our, our dynamic mics, too, for sound. So anyway, without further ado, we're going to start the show. Start the back. The show is on for the podcast. Jonathan, we're ready to go. If you want to start, welcome to WP Tonic. Hello there, Bill. No, Come on, bring it up, mate. Okay, it's see? been driving me crazy, folks, we, with all okay, these stop. podcasting. We, we just did the test. You didn't, you didn't sound God, like that. folks, he just, he's bonkers. So Jonathan just went way too loud and blew out the uh, system. Did I? I don't have, if I had a really good mixer and I had limiters, you I'll could go as loud as you want. I, I'd like limit the top side. Do you, Bill? So go ahead. Now, this is important sound. This so anyway, welcome Bill. to WP Tonic. We're I here. hear that every show, Bill, that Jonathan, your freaking bloody sound is important. And it's getting better. It's getting really good, too. Right. So, Jonathan, let's get right into yeah. the show. I, I know you want to talk about... Uh, I didn't even have my notes in front of responsive me. Responsive design, Bill. <laughs> responsive design. And I know what responsive design is. Yeah. So what, 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 what we're going to do, folks, is do uh, I'm just going to quickly go through why responsive design is important. And then I'm going to go through a group of plugins that um, I utilize quite a lot on most clients' websites. Not everyone, but most of them. And I know that you folks that are listening out there love your plugins, and we all do in our way, but they also can cause us a, a few problems. But I've had a few requests to, uh, to go through my plugin list, and uh, that's what I plan to do, Bill. Plugin day, responsive and plugin day. That's what I'm going to do. Very good. So for what it's worth, I think we're probably getting our best sound we've ever had today. It's Great. Not, not where I want it 100%, but it's getting there. He's so fanatical. It's going to be a good show, sound, and if folks. you want to listen to it, uh, it's live right now on Google I've had Hangouts. an hour of him before the show, folks, and it's driving me bonkers, but there we go. We've got to make sure that this is on the bottom of the page, too. Yeah, sure. With the, yeah. Uh, All right. Then. So responsive design, why does it matter, and what are some of the key principles of it? The reason why it matters is um, over the past year, um, the figures clearly show that the amount of people coming to your website um, utilizing non-traditional devices. And what do I mean by non-traditional? Well, for me to say that, I have to clarify what is traditional and what is classified as additional is a desktop PC or a laptop. Um, that that is what is called traditional um, computing. Um, what is untraditional? Well, uh, mobile devices: your smartphone, your Android, your Windows phone, your iPhone, your tablet, your Android tablet, uh, uh, Samsung Galaxy, or your iPad. Uh, normal size or mini. Um, that side of the viewing market is increasing rapidly. And what happened a year ago is that more people are coming to your website utilizing non traditional devices than traditional devices. Um, so your site needs to be. Uh, easily accessible to people utilizing non-traditional devices um, like um, iPhone. So how do you do that? Well, um, there's various methodologies. Um, there's three main ways you can do that. You could have a app and um, there's a lot of app um, developers at the Reno Collective, and that's where we do our show, our great show, folks. At the Reno Collective, there's a few people here that make a very good living, and do a very good job on making apps for the iPhone and for the Android platform. And um, in the right scenario, that is the right choice to make. Um, but um, it's extremely expensive, folks, and it's normally out of the budget of the small to medium-sized business. 
and they would be better advised to utilize their marketing dollars on a better solution. And the, main, the two other main solutions are to have a totally separate website that's mobile friendly or to have a website that's responsive. Um, the mobile solution is becoming slightly less popular but it still has its place. There's some um, websites that when people are on a mobile device they will want to have certain information right in front of them that a more traditional desktop or laptop audience it wouldn't be quite so crucial so if you're in one of those kind of in industries or your website you look at the at the data that's coming from your Google Analytics and you can see that when people are on on mobile devices they go to a certain page of your website or a certain area of your website and you're getting a high level of traffic um, when people are utilizing mobile devices going to these specific pages you might be better off looking at a mobile site but the main tool that most people utilize is called responsive and what is responsive responsive is it's a it's not a very complicated technology it utilizes something that came out about three years ago when um, a technology called CSS was upgraded it has a kind of industrial um, organization that controls this technology and they brought out a new version and in that new version there was something called media queries and what media queries do does is um, it senses what device somebody is viewing a website on inside the browser and then it says well if you have got this screen size this screen resolution and there's a media query that says show this menu show this picture show this post in this way if you're utilizing this size screen and it senses the screen size and it sees if there's a media query and it sees in that media query if you're utilizing a screen resolution that matches that query it will then show what's ever inside that query so what that does it enables you to show different content contact tent to people at different screen sizes have I totally lost you, Bill? I'm listening. No, I'm listening. Have I lost you, Bill? Nope, you haven't lost me because I've actually studied most of this already. Great. Please get in touch. I did learn something new about the mobile. So that the mo I, I thought of the dynamic side as working across all platforms that there wasn't just a mobile unique system. I guess there was in the past, years ago, but the mobile unique or specifically designed for just mobile is sort of going away. Even within mobile there's so many different little platforms within the mobile. You've got the Galaxy, you have the iPhone. So you'd have to design to those different systems. He's, he's, he's quite spot on there yeah. folks. See, he, He's learning. And I'm multitasking too. I'm, I'm looking at, I'm disappointed that we're not a little bit better focused with our 930C. But it, he loves I know, his tech folks. I know our sound is good. Well there's, there's a lot of things to do when you're do, you're running a podcast like I'm doing. I'm doing the sound engineering, the editing, the auditing. Now you're doing the content development today, which is nice. I'm not really doing any content. I'm just soaking in what you're teaching. Oh, it's a, it's a soaking in day, folks. I'm soaking in. I'm really soaking in more, but I'm still uh, made very good moves on the uh, technology side. He's amazing, really, Bill. He drives me potty, actually. He's right. bonkers, but he's got. He's a real doer, old Bill. Well, if you look at, we're focusing in right on this system right here. It's focusing there. And I've got well, the for our podcast listeners, Bill, that would be quite difficult. <laughs> but you know what? That's why we want to drive them to WP Tonic to look at this. Oh, we're going to be posting and I uh, a video on our site, aren't we, Bill? Yeah, and well, I am. At the bottom, I do. Yeah, yeah, you post the bottom, and I'll probably recontent this on uh, either Bluff TV just to sh put it up on Bluff. Bluff is sort of the fun place. Bluff directs you to WP Tonic, 
timeline of success, politics of success, and anything else other than your podcasting empire. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are they? Yeah, Doc? that's not hard, is it? Because we're the only one. Our, lo um, our local TV stations are shivering right now. Yeah, but oh, they want to be because the shit they. Oh. You know what? Stop. <laughs> we can't take that out of this, but we'll take it out of the podcast. Oh god. But you know that that said, I'm I'm a big believer that this is the future of the technology. Yeah, sure. So um, I've got so responsive design is basically based on media queries. Um, the actual technology, um, you know, isn't that difficult. Um, where it becomes a bit more difficult is that um, you've got to have an experienced designer developer plan with the client what's going to be shown and what isn't going to be shown at different screen resolutions because you've got less real estate of screen. So it's important... So you buy a theme from whatever theme shop or theme resource that you normally go to and it could be responsively designed, which is great. And of course you will want to do changes. You might want to move things around and you'll find your local developer that can do that for you. Well, that's great, but that also means that all the energy that went into testing that theme um, has to be redone, especially if you're going to adapt it quite a lot. Um, um, and there has to be a decision on which devices you're going to um, test this adaptive site on. And it's really dependent on time, budget. Um, it's the normal setup. And in my experience, when you're dealing with small to medium-sized clients, budget, time, resources are in short supply. So I think, I'm not saying that responsive design has made this worse, um, because these issues were there before responsive design. It's just made the situation a little bit more complicated. So I'm going to leave responsive design now because um, we're going to go back to it and I'm probably going to delve into it with a little bit more detail because it is important. But I'm now going to go on to a number of WordPress plugins that I utilize quite a lot um, um, and just go through what they, what they are, what they do. And when we um, put the show notes on, the links to these plugins and what they actually do um, is going to be part of the show notes. So don't worry, folks, it's going to be available. So are we ready, Bill? Yeah, go ahead. We're drive on. You know, we're just driving on to the next episode here. Go ahead, and I yeah. think I understand. I, I think a lot of people understand responsive design and the complexities. One thing you didn't mention, and maybe for a later show, is what are the top themes for responsive design? The easiest to use for if I, I was starting over, what would I want to pick for a theme to develop my website? Well, I think that's that would be part of the maybe the next show or okay. one of the shows that that's we and I think your point is really yeah. great where we could go into more detail about that. Yeah, because I have I, and we will. And I'm looking at Dynamic. Dynamic does a pretty good job, which is a Genesis with Dynamic overlay, but it doesn't do an amazing job on some of the phones. Well, I think I think everything you said. And have you test have you tested how it actually looks on a on a tablet on a smartphone? Have you done a fair yeah, bit of testing? I, I've done. Of course, I have the iPad. I've got the iPhone, so I've looked at those. And on the iPhone, it, it, the header is a little bit not accurate. But the other thing is, I also pulled some testing. Uh, sites up where you can actually test yes. them on different sites. And I think I found that site through one of our many. WordPress meetup classes, which are very good. They're in Reno. That's one thing I think we do really well is the WordPress meetup here in Reno, which the next one is on August 15th. 14th. 14th. August 14th. Thursday the 14th. Collective. Yeah, thir at 6 o'clock, Reno Collective. So, And I'm going to be talking about responsive design. And we can put this out ahead of time, too, this this piece ahead of the podcast. Mm -hmm. We'll try to get make sure the podcast is out before that. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. So um, I'm going to go into... Um, 
some of the plugins that I utilize on a regular basis. Um, one, one new one um, is a plugin called Subtitles. And it's a feature of WordPress that you have um, a main title. But if you want um, a subtitle um, on your page or on your post, WordPress doesn't really do that very easily. It doesn't give that functionality to you very obviously. There's ways around it. And there was a couple of other plugins that I utilized. Um, but I never found a really good, satisfactory solution that I was happy to offer to clients until recently. And then this plugin by Philip Arthur Moore, who's well known in the WordPress development community, um, he's now based in Vietnam. Um, um, there's a couple of podcasts that recently that he's been on, and he's he used to work for WordPress and he's a well-known developer so he brought out this free plugin called subtitles and it's excellent and it you need to look at it and it will be very helpful to you and like I say we're going to put full notes on um, about all these plugins on our website and the next one frequently asked questions most sites have a, fr a frequently asked question area and there's a number of plugins um, but the one I've found um, the most effecti effective is a plugin called Arconex Frequently Asked Questions um, by John Gardner and it's a really nice plugin it produces a custom post type <coughs> and I hope that you know what a custom post type is but it, it produces a nice interface where you can put the frequently asked question and then a box where you can put the answer and then it displays that utilizing um, a little bit of code um, which you can put on a page or a post and a short code basically and um, it's got a nice bit of jQuery magic so you just see the questions and you click a button and the answers will just appear so it, it all works really very nicely and it displays really nice as well and I've utilized it on a number of sites and I'm very happy with it and another one a slightly bigger plugin is Shortcode Outer by, I'm going to murder this man's name, but there we go, Vladimir Aknokin. I think he's Russian. And I do apologize to the gentleman. I'm sorry I've murdered your name. Um, you find with a number of themes that, and it's in the past 18 months, it's become very popular that a lot of themes have short codes that are inbuilt into the theme. And I'm not totally against that, but there are problems if it goes too far. And on some themes, it definitely has gone too far. And why am I a little bit against a theme that has a load of short codes? Well, if you want to change theme and the short codes are being produced by the theme author and only available in that theme. If you change themes, you've got a bit of a problem because you're going to use, you're going to lose that data. Um, one of the ways you can get around this is to utilise this plugin, and it, this plugin author does offer a premier version, but unlike most, he provides a ton of usability in the free version as well. It really, a lot of the functionality that you would look for is included in the free version, and even more functionality is included in the pro version. And it's a really very useful tool. It provides a lot of very useful functionality that's easily available like making buttons 
um, various things. So I I utilize it a lot, and my clients like it a lot. So um, that's a great one. Another one, a very small one, but a very useful one is a plugin called Delete All Comments. And it's a very small plugin, but it does one really useful job. You get a lot of, uh, I get a lot of clients that um, have started a website themselves. They have started a business online or they, they've got an existing physical business and they um, did their website initially themselves and then they realize it's a little bit more complicated than they thought or they're just getting busy so they call in somebody like me to manage their website and um, it's really easy if you don't set up WordPress from the beginning to get a lot of spammy comments on your website and you find that even if you're not displaying these comments that you still get people that will have that they're not actually people they're it's robot code that's looking for um, a web a WordPress website that's not been secured and they still will post comments even if they're not displayed on your website and these comments will have links going to various products because um, Google in the US and in um, Europe have really um, made this technique not that beneficial but in third world countries like especially in China having a lot of spammy external links going to a website you still get a lot of SEO benefit so you find that you you get to a lot of websites that have a ton of really spammy comments in them and the WordPress out the box you got to delete all these comments one by one and it can be a real nightmare when well you say delete them one by one can't you just go select all with about 10 or 20 at a time and just go down through yeah but you, I've had websites that's had 20,000 yeah I did that to the volu- when I took over the, my nonprofit and fixed and just got rid of their old website and built a new one uh, my old website I took a lot of those comments down they had a lot and the, most of them were from Russia yeah Russia China Russia and you can tell which ones are the spam and computer generator robots yeah. yeah but I've had websites that have had thousands yeah that would take a long time at 20 um, well you install this plugin delete all comments and there are other ones that mm-hmm. give you a little bit more um, selectability like um, this one blasts everything out you know but there's a there's a couple others that I could talk about about in later episodes that give you a little bit more functionality but this one it's got one choice you select all the comments you select a a tick box which it puts in and it gets rid of them all end of story bang everything's gone right now you have no comments at all though how about if I want a few selected comments no it doesn't remove the comment functionality you can people then could put new ones but I'm talking about a site that hasn't been set up for comments but it has a load of junky comments right. in the back in the administrative section well I've just found this it does one thing and it does one thing really well it gets rid of a load of crap comments that shouldn't be there all right on to a big a, a, a slightly bigger one a bit like short code ultimate is table press and table press um, is produced by a company which I can't pronounce their name, Tobias BG or something. Um, but it's a, it's, um, they also offer a pro version, and it's very similar to Short Code Ultimate that the free version still does a ton of stuff. And, and obviously, we're in the era of CSS and um, HTML5, um, but um, tables are still useful for displaying data that needs to be in tables. Unfortunately, the normal table um, 
functionality that comes with WordPress in your in your visual editor isn't that fantastic. It doesn't be that if you utilize the normal table editor in WordPress, your tables aren't going to be responsive. But by utilizing this free plugin, it produces code that is responsive if you're utilizing, you're displaying a lot of data in tables. Obviously, uh, a web professional would know how to set up that table and make it responsive, but this is aimed at a person that's maintaining the site, the site owner or people who haven't got a lot of development experience and they still need to display a lot, lot of data in tables. And I found it, my clients really like it and it's really useful. Right? right, a small business might use that internally if they're spread out to pass that data information to their people. That's why I mean, those, most or, 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 or clients. Or clients. I guess clients who need a lot of data, a lot of information. Yeah, uh, you know, and putting that into type like price, engineer price lists. You know, obviously you would have those price lists downloadable as PDFs, right. but you to get good SEO and have it more available to people, you would want that some of that data to be displayed on the web page. Well, a table, a nice formatted table, is the perfect way okay. to display that data, right? Very good. The next one, calendars. Well, there are a number of calendar systems. The inbuilt calendar and that comes with WordPress is not very good. Um, but there are, there are some excellent pro free versions and pro versions. Um, a lot of them, that they seem to come into two camps there seems to be a the very basic um, calendar plugin systems that just don't quite do what you're looking for they're too basic basically and then you have um, there's calendar Pro from Modern Tribe, which is one I utilize. They're great people, and it's a great calendar. They have a basic calendar that's really, really good, and then they have a pro version as well. And I have got the developer's license, and I do utilize it, but it's a big plugin. It's a it, it provides a lot of functionality, and Normally, clients need a bit of training to utilize it if they're going to utilize all the functionality that comes with it. So, there's I've always on the lookout for a really nice free calendar that that um, gives a lot of functionality, but isn't quite as big big a beast. And um, I was recommended this one called Ajax Event Calendar, and I think it's a really nice um, blend of not being too simple but not being too complicated as well. And it's, it was developed by a guy called Aaron Miller and um, it really seems a nice mixture. So I've utilized it on a couple of websites and I've been quite happy with it and so have my clients. So go and look at that, folks. Um, the next one um, solves a really specific problem, but a very annoying problem. Um, if you use SEO by um, Yoast, which is the mo is a great SEO plugin, one of the things it does, though, and there's other plugins that do this as well, is that when you go into your pages and your posts, it adds a load of additional fields and you find that your admin area is all kind of jumbled up. It's all going to be you know, which like if you go into a Pacific post you have a, a, a column for the post data, you have the column for the title 
well, Yoast and some others add another load of fields and you find there's not enough room and everything gets jumbled up, all right? And there's no, um, you can, each post you can go in and switch some of these fields off. But let's say you got, you've got you you've installed Yoast's Yoast great plugin, but you've got 100 posts. And that means you would have to go into each separate post and set up the look. That that could be a real pain in the posterior. With Yoast, huh? Yeah. To get around this, there's a lovely little free. They do a pro version. It's called CodePress Admin Columns, and it provides a global setting. Um, where you can go in and say it sees which other plugins you've installed uh, that affect how data is displayed in the admin area. It also um, deals with custom post types really well and it says you know you can tick a few boxes off and you can switch off which of these columns that you don't want to see and then you save it and you find all your pages, all your posts I've dealt with in one go. It it really deals with this problem, which is very very annoying. And in a way, I think WordPress should have a global setting that comes with it anyway. Now, Jonathan, I'm going to interrupt you here because I again, dynamic Genesis with dynamic. That's the whole concept. It's got the global settings, but again, I'm not too sure how it interacts with the different plugins. That's the hard thing is getting the right plugins, you know, yeah, and getting the right combinations and the right look, and then not playing with it too much and getting it so it works functionality uh, of the system of your primary system. Very good. Hey, how many more do we have here, Jonathan? I've we're got at, two we're more. Twenty more. Twenty-nine minutes. We're going over a little. Yeah, two little more. Over. Two more. So we need to wrap one. it up. No, we, we, maybe we can finish off with these two more. Um, there's, um, there's. Two that are very related, but they come from two authors, funny enough. There's simple custom post order and simple page order. Um, simple custom post order comes from Samir Hamagan, and um, simple page order comes from Jake Goldman, who's uh, the well-known owner of 10up, which is a, a large WordPress development shop. But both do this, a similar job. Simple custom post order and simple page order is if you've got a load of posts or you've got a load of pages and you want to, on your admin area, you want to put certain posts at the top or you want to put certain pages at the top of your order, there's no real way of do, easy way of doing that in WordPress. This provides some jQuery and you can just drag a post up to the top of your admin area or drag a page and it's set so you can put everything in order. That's that easy and it really, if you've got a lot of posts and a lot of pages but there's certain posts or certain pages that you go to very regularly, you want them on the first page. Let's say, um, and this sorts it out. And my final one is social media icons. And there's a number of plugins that provide you with a, a nice interface where you can place your place th this these plugins on different widget areas or on your pages or on your posts. But the one I found that gives the best look the best versatility of being able to place these social icons is a plugin called Social Media Widgets. And it's by a company called Blink Web Effects that produce it. And I've utilized this plugin on a load of websites. There, there are, are other really popular ones, but for its versatility and it being that it's free. I found this to be the best kind of social media plugin that gives you all these icons and an uh, interface to link to your own social media websites. And there you are, folks. Hopefully, you found that all these plugins um, useful because I, I found them really useful in helping clients maintain and build their websites. 
That's good, Jonathan. It was very informative. When I do post-production, I will even learn more about all these sites. You did a really nice job also of creating all those links and your free product. Remind people to go to WP Tonic to sign up for the... I've got a new... I've got a new... um, I'm offering... Um, a, a PDF to folks. Um, when you come to the home page, um, a, uh, a pop-up will pop up. Um, but we're o- I'm offering a great um, uh, PDF where I list the 20 most uh, powerful, most useful plugins that I I've utilised on clients' websites, um, and it's in different sections. There's a section for membership plugins. There's a section um, for form plugins, and all the, all those that are listed, I have utilised myself, and I think they're quality products from quality developers or development teams. And it's a it's a useful PDF, and all you have to do is join our mailing list to get it. And we're going to send out a monthly newsletter where I'm um, that I'm going to write a long article about a certain subject about WordPress, and I'll send this article to you. Um, so it's great value. Yeah, I think that is very good. Uh, that monthly newsletter. I'm looking forward to it. I know I learn a lot from breaking down and looking at these podcasts that we put together and the specific issues. One thing that I'm working on is in Timeline of Success, timelineofsuccess.com or Bluff TV, where Bluff is where you find everything. I'll probably build a collection site. I'm going to offer something a little simpler. It's sort of just where I am and what the plugins on my WordPress site are. And mine's mine's a little different. Uh, it's dynamic, which you're not the generous. You seem a bit down today, Bill. I'm What's not. The you're not. You're you know not cheerful. Is it I'm, me? I'm you're... not down. I'm just really focused. I've been working really hard. I've been producing I'm on show 34, and we've had 34 days of good shows. The sound on this is going to be pretty good. Just so you guys know, I could let Jonathan yell and scream more, like he does. Me? He gets excited. Oh, I excitement don't, is I good. I don't scream and shout. At but, you, Bill. but but I'd have to get a better mixer, which has a noise gate, basically that when you hit the top, it would oh, cut it off yeah. and still not distort the sound. And that's a very much more expensive system. Probably talking about. Th- Four hundred to six hundred dollars to get the really good system, so that's what I'm doing. I'm doing behind the scenes the constant improvement with the quality of the podcast. And the, I hate to use the word podcast because it's really going out to uh, different elements. It's going out to iTunes, which is the podcast. It's going out to Stitcher Radio, which is goes out everywhere in a different environment. And then finally, iHeart Radio, which even has the ability to go on radio itself. Yes. It's so, not a great title, but it's the no. title that made, but it never was fantastic, was yeah, it? Yeah, in closing, just so we know, is it, it occurred the RSS feed, Apple tamed the RSS feed first in any kind of commercial application in 2004, and that's where your podcast terminology started. And it's really anything that's, and, and a lot of radio shows are turned into podcasts, so. That's another issue, another topic, and that's what I look at. Um, no, I'm not down. I'm just working a lot of hours. Um, I'm doing a lot of work. Things are actually starting to come together with the the show. We're constantly building up more oh, listeners. We're, well, you know, we're, you know, I've got a lot of past content, and I'm going to post a lot of stuff onto the website. So it's going to have a lot yeah. of... Um, and we hope to post some videos because we're recording a lot um, live, recording a lot of our stuff now. And... Um, I'm watching it right now, folks, on our um, camera setup, and um, a lot of it. And we're going to be doing some interviews. Um, I've got some exciting uh, Matt from the Matt Report has agreed to come on the show, hopefully next week. And I've got Spencer, the evil genius. He's well known in the WordPress community. He's agreed to come on the show. And I'm going to do some outreach. So each month we hope to have one or two people in the work well known in the WordPress community come on the show and give um, their insight where they think WordPress is going to go um, and some of their industrial experience right. um, so um, I think we're probably going to talk more about plugins more regularly and, and have more guests on the show so there'll be less of listening to me 
Which... It's happening, and I'm going to actually, Jonathan, I'm going to change the mix up. We've got probably three or four shows in the sack, which are good shows. I'm going to actually try to put this up on Monday. So we're doing this on Friday. So it's current. I think one of the things that's lacking in some people's show is that they produce them and they don't put them up for months. I want to current stuff yeah, because things more. changes. Mm -hmm. So we'll get this up Monday. I hope do we have you might be losing Jonathan, that's I want to show you this and people are still watching. Here's how we really improve. I sort of watch other people. I think so. If, if that was black, yeah. If that wall was black and we didn't have a shiny board there and we had these three lights. These lights are fine for now. It's amazing for fifty dollars because you can spend hundreds of dollars for this. This works, and you get this light right. You know the right angle. You and you want these that are shoulder shooting down and one going forward. So one going forward, shoulder shooting down, and then the right screens. But black there would really help the lighting. Just black. I've seen black on the back. Black is the easiest to adjust your light. The table is good. In the, the the camera we're playing with right now. Oh, but I think the actual quality of picture from the camera is fantastic. Well, even better than that is too. But the sound today is actually going to be decent. This is the first time I think we're getting as long as I'm popping up into this area in the sound. We're looking at, down at the computer, and I'm able to look at the computer here. I could do other things too. You almost need two computers. You need one computer dedicated to the pot, to the Google Plus Hangout. And another thing too for you folks out there, and I'm talking to a lot of different people, they say the best, the possibly the best and most effective way to commit to the Google Plus Hangout is to get a uh, Chrome box. Chrome box, a couple hundred bucks. It's just running Chrome. Oh, right, yes. And it works all. In, I don't know about using a, one of the Chrome computers, but the Chrome box is powerful enough. Or it's got, a, I think, an i5 chip. I'm not sure what chip is in that Chrome box. It's got different. There's different manufacturers got, in there. Yeah, there's a couple. But you want a decent chip dedicated to that podcast, and then you need a monitor. So that, that would be ideal. But the next step here is we're at the collective is actually to have a set up studio. A studio would accelerate everything I do. And most of my time, and we're back behind the scenes here, most time my time is spent in post-production. And the where I'd like to spend more time is creating products, is creating the uh, tutorials that would help people 35 and over, I hate to say this, understand podcasting better, smartphones, and the systems to get up and, and hook in and get on. Like, uh, I'd like to see more people in iTunes actually having automatic downloads on their smartphones. I think that is the best way to listen to a podcast. And what we're getting on our shows is most people are, 70% of people are downloading it from their computers and listening it to on their computers. I can tell. Um, we're getting some good numbers. We've had some good numbers in Reno. I can actually tell what state they're downloaded in. And in Nevada, we've had some. In Nevada alone, we've had some shows, uh, 300, 400 downloads in the state of Nevada. So in, in my show, so I'm learning, and it's starting to grow. And it's really nice. The daily show. I have to say, if you're into podcasting, you want to work your tail off, you get good content. That daily show is definitely building uh, listeners. And that daily show should bleed over into this. Should the people want to learn more about WordPress and a little bit about podcasting? And we're going to talk specifically how to use um, some of these systems into real estate and other specific areas would bleed over. Now I'm talking a lot, but this is behind the scenes, and this is the fun. It'll be interesting to see how this turns out. You, anything else you want to say before we sign off, Jonathan? No, uh, I, I think you can talk uh, loud now. It doesn't make a difference. All right, because I. Um, I think um, we just need to clarify what our audience on WP Tonic are and get a more coherent structure to what is going to be on the show and who our target audience is. I always felt it was the business owner, um, but that's still very, very broad. Um, I think... Uh, just need to work on that, but the main thing is we got the first four shows up. I think we're both committed about continuing with this. Let um, me tell you who I think the, the listener is. The new listener, the listener who will stick with us, are the people who are maybe still working for somebody and they're thinking about starting a business or thinking or playing around with WordPress in the weekends and at night, but they have this entrepreneurial spirit and they want to start their own business and they want to grow. 
I think that's like 50 plus percent of our listeners. And I'm analyzing this because I use something called Lipson. I can actually go in and find out where people are listening, actually down to the city. And that's who I think our listeners, our long-term best listeners are. Other people will come in. Now, what I find is your, your entrepreneurs who are very successful work really hard and are putting a lot of hours in, and they're very selective of what they listen to, and therefore they don't listen to much because they're at a certain point. Or they have other people working for them who listen and bring that information up. This is the high-end entrepreneur. This is the entrepreneur making a lot of money uh, or who is working full-time. Um, I run the entrepreneur meetup here in Reno, Nevada, and the commonality is your very top entrepreneurs, whether they're making money or not, but who are surviving, work a lot of hours, whether they're restaurateurs, they have a small business or a contractor, they work a lot of hours, and they don't have a lot of time to digest the information. They do on podcasts. When they're driving, they'll digest it. When they're taking trips, when they're jogging, if they get time to exercise, those are the times that they listen. So that's my feeling. My feeling is the number one person listening to this show is the person who wants to take the next step on WordPress. And I'm doing that. Actually, I'm doing that with our real estate company right now. I'm in the process of running the real estate company, not on a traditional website, but on WordPress. And that's what I'm doing. And that, that's a little bit of effort in itself. I think a lot of people are in the same boat, Bill. I think that's the future uh, in, in real estate. I think WordPress will be one of your main platforms. I wouldn't be doing it unless I believed that. So anyway, I think this is going to be fun to see the quality and how this works. I'm a little disappointed with the camera. I, I would like to have got a higher definition with this camera. It's okay. And I know there's ways to do that. I think you 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 don't have to spend a lot of money, but I think to get anything better than that, Bill, you you actually have to invest in a high definif, different definition or a, a video camera. There's different ones. There, yeah, there's different ones. A couple thousand dollar camera is going to get gorgeous. The other thing too, I would actually, do, I don't think you have to spend that kind of money. I think I've known people spend a hundred dollars on a that cost. That was a hundred bucks on a video, uh, which has got a, a zoom right more, uh, and a lens. It's all in the lens and the other things and that. When, and they say also, the little I know, is the quality of the signal that the camera produces. So I, I, let's get in there. The other thing, too, is, and this we're really babbling, and this is Google+. Plus. So you can do that in Google+. Plus. Down the road, it would really be nice in these shows to have, I can see the importance of having someone as a sound engineer, someone checking this, doing that, doing research, 100% sound engineer. And that's what radio stations have. They have a sound engineer. They're also taking out the trash, but they're also working the sound. And more and more of these bigger radio stations are getting fewer people downloading a feed and not producing local content. Some are, some aren't. But that's what iHeart is doing. They're taking selective podcasts, on-demand radio like we have, and they'll put it into different communities across the United States. And somehow they have the ability to find out through the waves what people are listening to or what their advertisers want or will pay for for those radio stations. So that's the world that's happening. I said a lot. That's This is behind the scenes. But I think this is going to be good today. It'll be interesting to see this. this yeah, right I think you've made... It was a bit of a struggle working out how Google Hangouts actually worked, I how it worked with more perfect... You know, outside could, the inbuilt camera and the inbuilt sound system, how you linked it to more professional external cameras. Uh-huh. I couldn't have it done it. It was a little bit of a, it was a bit of an I had to, no Unbelievable. I tried nothing. to help Bill and I found it very frustrating, so did Bill. But, and the information isn't that clear and you have to hunt for it. And it's very typical Google. It's very <laughs> For straight, you know, it's so typical Google, this enormous company that's got all this, all these high, highly intelligent people, and this enormous budget, and they do come out with this fantastic technology. And Handout is a perfect example of that. But actually, the way they communicate and their help section, and that is appalling. And yeah, they have no help, really. They they've got no help. No and the, the way that I mean, you you, figure you, it out. Um, you have to download a plugin, and you don't, you know, yeah, these to have 
the or you have to go into Gmail and um, and find some settings there, but then you find out you should install this plugin and this, and it's just mind-boggling, isn't you know, it? Bill? Yeah, it is. Now let me tell you, there there was nothing, there's absolutely nothing on YouTube of any benefit. Nothing we, is it? There's a wind, couple guys. In fact, there's a lot of wind. In isn't fact, it? I watched on. I'm not going to say the A word where I bought it from. <laughs> I guess I could. Yeah. Uh, I'm trying to become affiliate. I'm not sure where Nick. I hate to ever criticize, condemn, or complain and actually put a name out. But on, where I bought it from online, they had, there's a great, I, I look at the stars and had good ratings, good stars. And there was a little video YouTube about plug and play in Max. It is not plug and play in the Mac. Well, I, dis I disagree, uh, Bill, because it is. How? The, well, the reason why I had to it's put not a plug in and yeah, but you were trying to plug it in and get Google Hangout to work. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. But if you as soon as I yeah. plugged it into my computer, it worked perfectly with the inbuilt software of the Mac or with Skype. Yeah, Skype it worked. But you just no, you, they, you plugged it in and you tried to get it to work yeah. with Google and it just wouldn't work, would it? Yeah, and one thing closing and I think you I wonder what is that might be something to do that Google doesn't actually like Apple that No, I don't know. They definitely <laughs> <laughs> or they, I don't know. Uh, there's a lot. You know, there's pros and cons. I have. I'm sure, if you had plugged it into a Chromebook, it would have worked straight away. Oh yeah. You know, we we're just talking. Well, maybe. I mean, we we're just. <laughs> I'll, I'll guarantee. But someone just do. told me, and this is what's frustrating. And he does it. He does this better than we do, I think. But he does it in a different area. He does it more high for his real estate company. But he well, said. Well, we need that, to get that gentleman on a special. Show. I would love to have him on. Yeah. That. It's John Stockton. I, I've been trying to get him on timelines of success, but he says he wants my page to be prettier before he comes on. John, I know you maybe maybe or may not hear this, but uh, it's at the end of the show. I know he's a busy guy. Yeah. So he came on last week when we were playing around here. We invited him on. In fact, I invited him on today. So is there any chance we might be able to get him on a hangout? Because I would like him his opinion on um, um, Melrite. And show, you know, him, and show him the product if you would and get, get his input. If you would get him to look at MailRite, you would get another opinion on the mine. And I'm sure that MailRite will work. That's another issue. It's going to take a lot of marketing, though. Yes, I do. Know. I, I just know you can sell any. It's a good enough product. It's 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 The product is sellable, but it takes a lot of marketing behind the scenes. But you're doing the right thing. We're starting to get the sites down. Hey, I'm going to... Sign off here. Well, thank you everyone for listening in. For those who, so, yeah. for those very few who listen to the end of this, uh, you probably got some bits of wisdom at the end. And we, it was well, a I think people show. actually, um, I think people like you to be real. That you know, you can't give away really, really personal stuff. I don't think that's yeah. appropriate. But um, we are, you know, um, I feel I'm 50 now, and I just think, and I've been in. I studied web design and went to university in my early uh, mid 30s, and I finished my last course when I was 39, and I came to Reno when I was about 43, and I've spent about seven years trying to learn about web and that, and um, it's been interesting. And obviously, the economic circumstances, I I couldn't have come at a worse time. Um, to yeah. this area and to America in general, so it's, to say it's been interesting and an interesting ride would be an understatement, Bill. Yeah, I'd always rather start how you started in a rough time as opposed to catching a real hot time because when it crashes, you're not ready for the crash, and the crash can come any time in business. Can can it? It just happens. Whether no matter what your business might be, things happen. So, but you have to be prepared. You can't be afraid, but you have to, to do those things. That's another issue. But anyway, thank you today. That was good. I need to look.